Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Demystifying the Well Woman Exam. What are you doing down there? My name is Lois Brown, and I am the nurse educator at the American Indian Cancer Foundation, and I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker today, Dr. Amanda Briegel. Dr. Briegel is from the Oneida and Stockbridge Muncie tribes, and she works as a gynecologic oncologist at the Oregon Health and Science University. Dr. Briegel specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of gynecologic cancers. She enjoys developing relationships with her patients and their families throughout the course of their cancer treatment and has a research interest in cancer prevention and improving access to treatment in the American Indian Alaska Native population. In her spare time, Dr. Briegel also enjoys hiking, camping, reading, and traditional Native American beadwork. This is the first webinar in a three-part series dedicated to women's health-related topics. Today's webinar will be only about 15 minutes long and is intended to provide a brief overview. Due to the short duration of the webinar and to respect your time, there is no time allotted for the question and answers. If you do have questions, please type your questions in the chat box or send an email to health at AICAF.org and we will send a follow-up email answering the questions and provide a recording of the webinar. We will start with the poll question. You should all see a box on your screen with the poll question. Please take a moment to answer the question and hit submit. The question reads, do you know what a well woman exam is? Yes, somewhat, no. I'll just give you a, a little bit here, a little bit of time to answer the question. All right, it looks like most of you know, have some idea what a well woman exam is. That's great. So I will let our speaker, Dr. Briegel, take over so she can present you with new information or give you a great refresher. Dr. Briegel? Good morning, everyone. Um, as Lois said, I'm Dr. Briegel, and I'm happy to demystify some of the information um, that is or isn't given during pelvic exams. Next slide. So let's demystify what happens down there. So first of all, let's start with who needs a well woman exam. Annual preventive health exams are good for women and everyone um, of all ages. When we start thinking about the female-specific exams, it's typically around age 21 that we begin thinking about a pelvic exam. And pap smears, also starting at age 21, um, this is a cervical cancer screening test that is often done at the same time as the pelvic. Um, and then a clinical breast exam. The clinical breast exam varies depending on your age, your personal and family risk factors, but approximately every one to three years before age 40, and then typically uh, yearly starting at age 40 and later. Next slide. Um, this is a long list of all the things that can be talked about at a well woman exam. <clears throat> things such as birth control, cancer screening, um, that is age specific, updating, vaccinations, general health screening, a depression screen, sexually transmitted infection screen, any concerns about sex or sexuality, a discussion of weight, any issues with the menstrual period, preconception counseling for those who are interested in uh, expanding their family, and any other reason that comes up. As you can see, there's a lot more to the well woman exam than just doing the pap smear. Next slide. One part that starts at age 21 is the clinical breast exam. Next slide, or next. This starts with a visual inspection. Things that the provider is thinking of is, are the breasts symmetrical? Does the left look like the right? Are there any rashes or irregular features on the skin that raise concern? Further, is there any dimpling of the skin that you can see that raises suspicion that something might be going on underneath the surface? Next. Additionally to looking, there's also the physical inspection. Pressure is applied to the nipple to assess for discharge or leaking of fluid. All breast tissue is felt in either a circular, next, or up and down motion to feel for irregularities. Either method is appropriate. What's important is that all the breast tissue is felt and palpated to feel for nodularity or fixed um, masses. In addition to feeling the breast tissue, it's also important to feel for lymph nodes in the axilla, which is your armpit area. Um, often the physician will take your arm and feel within the armpit. Some people are ticklish here, and that is perfectly okay if you giggle during this part of the exam. Next. 
In addition to the breast exam, there's also the pelvic exam. I think this is, this is most women's least favorite part of their annual exam. I wanna just familiarize with some basic anatomy of what we are feeling for and looking at during this exam. Next. First, what you see highlighted here is the cervix. The cervix is the bottom of the uterus. This is what is sampled when you are actually having a pap smear taken. It only um, evaluates this part of the anatomy, not additional anatomy that you see here. Next. This arrow points to the ovary. This is a source of hormones, estrogen and progesterone, that are secreted during a woman's reproductive years. Next. This arrow points to the fallopian tube. When a woman ov ovulates, the egg travels through the fallopian tube and toward the uterus. Next. One more. Um, during a pelvic exam, I, you see in the upper left-hand corner, there's a woman with her legs in the stirrups. This is what I call the pap smear position. Your butt will be hanging just slightly off the edge of the bed, and that allows for placement of the speculum. As you can see in the lower image, the metal structure that is placed into the vagina allows for visualization of the cervix. Once the cervix is seen, a small brush is used to scrape the edge of the cervix and exfoliate cells. This is what the pap smear is, and it just samples some cells from the surface of the cervix. Next. A closer look at the speculum. There are two different types. On your left, you'll see a plastic one, and on your right is a metal one. Both are completely uh, acceptable for use. Some providers like one over the other. One thing to note of the one on the left, sometimes when it's opening, it makes these clicky noises that can be a little disconcerting while you are being examined. The clicky noises means nothing is wrong with you. Um, it just means that it is being opened so that the cervix can be seen. Next. On the left is an example of a normal appearing cervix. You can see that it looks like a little pink bagel. The surfaces are smooth, it's circular, and that hole in the center is the opening of the cervix. Next. This is an example of what an invasive cancer looks like. When you compare this to the um, cervix on the left, you can see that it is not as smooth on the surface. There's a little bit more um, bloody tissue, something we call friability. And you can also see that there are raised things on the surface, um, surface of the cervix. And these are things that raise our suspicion when we look. And if I were to see this during an exam, I would consent the patient to undergo a biopsy so we can look at this further. Next. This is a schematic of what happens when we take your sample um, that we took from the, the surface of the cervix and send it to the pathologist. So the little brush that takes the sample is put into some fluid and that fluid is treated and the pathologist puts these things on a slide. On the top, you see examples of what the pathologist might see on the slide. They should look like a fried egg. The more yolk you have in the fried egg, the more concerning the, the cell type is. So really what you want is to have more egg yolk and less I mean, more egg white and less yolk. As you go from left to right on the screen, you have more concerning degrees of precancer of the cervix. Next. So what's happening when they're doing the pelvic exam portion? Next. So first, the information that's gathered. A provider will place one or two fingers within the vagina and then one on your belly. In between the two hands talking to each other, there are things that the provider can, can determine. First, is there tenderness of the uterus or the cervix? Sometimes tenderness is normal because nobody's comfortable having one of these exams. But if there is an unusual degree of tenderness, that can be a marker of infection. We also ask, what is the size of the uterus? Is it a normal size? For most women, it'll be about the size of your fist or a little bit bigger. If we feel irregularities, um, that can be consistent with a benign fibroid, or it can be something else that raises our suspicion and makes us um, more likely to order an ultrasound or something to look further. In addition to feeling the size and contour of the uterus, we can also feel if the ovaries are enlarged or not. All of this information is obtained from this simple exam. Next. So some things to tell your provider um, at your appointment. First and foremost, if you feel comfortable with your provider, let them know if you have any history of sexual or physical trauma. These exams are very private for most of us. And for anyone who has experienced um, physical or sexual trauma in the past may be exquisitely sensitive. And if you tell your provider, there are certain things that they can do to help make you more comfortable and to help keep you in control of the exam so that you are aware of what's happening and when. About one in three to one in four women have been 
a victim of sexual or physical trauma, and it is not unusual for us to hear this information and to help tailor our exams to help you, the patient, get through them without being triggered. Next. Additionally, discuss your cycles and find out if they're normal. Most women will have a 28 to 35 day cycle. It'll be regular, it'll be once a month, um, and there'll be no bleeding in between. So if you are on this pattern, it's good to just reassure yourselves that everything's normal. If you find that your pattern varies, it's good to bring up with your provider to help investigate to see if there's anything else going on that needs to be evaluated. Additionally, if you're having bleeding after intercourse or between cycles, that's also important to talk to your doctor with. Next. You can talk about any sexual health concerns, pain with intercourse, bleeding, any concerns for infections, such as sexually transmitted infections, concerns about a partner exposure or a, new, or a new partner, this is the time to have testing done so that you can take care of yourself. Next. Family planning. This is the time to talk about, do you want to have children in the near future? What can you do to optimize your health and wellness to have a healthy pregnancy? Or do you want to discuss contraception? What is a good and reliable method for you to prevent pregnancy until you are ready to do so? There are many different options that can be discussed with you at this time, and your provider can look at your unique health history and preferences to help find something that works for you. Next. And any general health concerns that you have. This appointment is for you and your wellness, and don't feel intimidated to bring up something, um, because that is why we are here to help take care of you. Next. Again, here is just a huge summary of everything that we are open to and wanting to work with you. It is not just about the pelvic exam. It's not just about the, the breast exam. Um, we want to take care of all aspects of you, and we are listening to help you um, work on your wellness journey in any way that we can. Next. For questions and more information, you can contact health at acaf.org. Hopefully I've helped provide some information to you who have been familiar with the Well Woman exam um, and also demystified some of what we're doing during that unwanted physical exam. Well, thank you, Dr. Regal, for sharing this valuable information. And I would like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar in partnership with the American Indian Cancer Foundation and Dr. Amanda Regal. Please contact us at the American Indian Cancer Foundation by emailing health at AICAF.org if you have any further questions. And I apologize for my typo. Please join us Wednesday, July 18th for our second webinar on cervical screening in special populations. More information to come. Be on the lookout for a follow-up email, slides available in PDF format, along with a link to today's recording. In addition, an email, an email from Robert Spencer has been sent to your inbox but includes a brief survey that we would greatly appreciate you fill out to give us feedback about today's webinar and format. Thank you.